Hi and welcome to this uh, first attempt to look at eLumen to enter my student learning outcomes for fall 2018. So the way to get to eLumen is simply to log into your Passport account and then on the miscellaneous quick links look for the eLumen tab and click on that. Once you do that you'll see the eLumen banner at the top and you'll see a series of choices here. Right now, from what I've determined working on my first assessment, you don't necessarily need most of these tabs. It seems like these will be for future implementations. I know there's talk about doing maybe the um, AUPs or APRs on Illumin in the future. So that's possible for some of this uh, future functionality. Now, one thing I think that's important is if you're in a one-person department like I am, and you are a department lead, you may see this tab at the top. This is fine for viewing assessments that you may have entered or your part-time faculty may have entered. So as an example, click on the SLOs and Assessments tab, which for the purposes of doing this exercise of entering our assessments now, this is I think primarily what you'll be working with. This will list all your courses and have your student learning outcomes, but right now I want to look only at the assessments. So I can click on that here. So for anthropology, I might see some of my current assessments, and if this was hypothetically taught by a part-time faculty member, this is actually my class, I could click on that report, and then this would show me the results. So this is one way that you could monitor the performance. And as you can see on your own assessments, even though it's aggregated down to the student level, for confidentiality, that information is not available here. And it has some pretty useful hover over menus that give you more information relative to that class and some of the assessments and the SLOs. In my case, because I'm coordinating two departments, I could also click on sociology and this will show you further assessments that maybe are due in the future for your work as a full-time faculty member or for some of your part-time faculty. I believe that the instruction office is loading future winter 2019, spring 19 SLOs that are up for review and you may actually then see these um, as a result of that on your assessment library. But for most people, you won't even possibly see departmental coordinator tab. And you'll want, if you do, you just want to click on faculty for the purposes of entering your own assessment. So I believe what should happen here, just make sure that courses is selected as a fall 2018. And if you actually click on SLO and assessments, this doesn't look like it looks like just a drop down, but you can also click on it. So just be sure if you need to get back to that menu, you actually click on it. And again, this should, I think, be defaulted, selected for you as fall 2018. So this is essentially my one assessment that is due this quarter. And I believe there was an email sent out that it's due in mid-January. So you could check your inboxes for that. This import scores option I think would be useful and as you can see I already started to score this but this would be for someone who potentially has set up a rather in-depth rubric in Canvas what you could then do is download the Excel file version of those grades import those scores in and I think then it would allow you to essentially just make it a default where you import that from your Canvas shell presumably you've been tracking your SLOs and scoring them throughout the teaching of your class. If you don't do that, you could just click on one of these two score, scorecard views. So this is the rubric view on the right, and on the left is the scorecard view. And I'll just show you both of these. Again, this is my current class, so this will be the one assessment I'll be looking at this, this time around. What I'm doing for the purposes of privacy is just setting up, um, I'm just blocking the student names here so you can't see them. But what would happen, and I'll just, you can see this, each of these is a new student. So in this view, you will get your SLOs for the class and you can see each time these repeat. So this block here that I have hidden with the student name, each of these is a student. So student one, 
student two, student three. And then of course the SLO repeats over time or rather with each new student iteration as you go down the screen, you just scroll down to the bottom and um, this is essentially everything. So what I found useful about eLumen is if you remember the old days of doing the templates, this really does shorten the process by which you do your assessment um, for your class. And one thing that you should note here you're not actually setting up, say, a Maslow. You're determining that on your end. So I have total freedom freedom then to say for this SLO of Anthro 106, analyze the interplay of visual and cultural forms, issues, modalities, and memes in the world. I've decided that I will set this up, connect it to my final project in the class, because for me, this is a very like synthesis, synthesis level SLO. And I think it'd be useful then for me to track it based on performance on the final project in the class. So a couple things to mention on this, as I'm scoring my SLOs, if the student did not attend, we don't want that to count against us in terms of our efforts as instructors, so I could click NA on here. So if I had a student the entire quarter, and this student actually is one of those, who didn't attend, obviously there's no reason to assess all the um, SLOs because then that would result in little to no understanding when in fact it's NA. It's very similar to how we score or deal on our grade sheets with ISP students if you teach in that program. If someone doesn't show up for the entirety of the class there's a way to denote that. So that's essentially this here. I could scroll down to another student and all I'm doing then is looking for complete, strong, moderate, or little to no understanding in these four columns and then deciding for each SLO where that student is. So again, on your own, connect each of your SLOs to your own method for scoring those SLOs. If it's a paper, if it's a question or set of questions on an exam, if it's a class presentation, make that determination. And I'll show you in a second, if you want to, you could track that and indicate a little bit more on your assessment about how you did this, if, if you'd like to do that under annotation. But so I could go in and for each of these, I may have a different assignment that's connected and I would score these. And I can just do this by the entire class, again starting alphabetically with the first student going all the way to the student at the end of the alphabet. As I said, if you want to add an annotation, you could click on that here. So I could say something like this. This assessment is based on the final project and I could hit save on that. And just be, be sure if you're doing an annotation, type in your name here because what could happen over time is um, additional people could write comments. And let's just look at that real quick to see how that works. So I think this might be useful, say, for the assessment committee. And this might even be more useful as we get to working on, say, the program level, um, institutional level, outcomes and assessment. You could have a series of individuals, say, on the committee writing their comments here, and it's an easy way within eLumen to keep track of these types of annotations. So this may not be relevant to this. Um, I think it's just it's a possibility out there for you if you'd like to have more information provided here about how you did your assessments. Okay, so that was that first view, the scorecard view. That has your entire class on one scorecard. If we click back on assessments, this actually will go to this view. And this is really the similar view I had before when I had department coordinator selected. So what I've discovered on this, and you may find something different, is anytime I complete my scorecard or rubric view on my assessment, I need to go back to courses and click on that tab and then I get this view. As you see in this view you have the scorecards whereas in that last view when I click on assessments it's just showing me the very general port under assessment library. So I think these two tabs you may have to click back and forth between them particularly probably for scoring multiple classes and if that's the case you should have multiple classes listed here. So let me go to the next view and this is what they call the rubric view. And this view I think is maybe 
the view I would use if I were deciding to go through each student one at a time. So you'll actually see here I have an assessment comment and this was a note that this particular student did not complete the class and I don't know at this point I wrote this in the past I don't have a sense of how to delete this because I was experimenting with this. So essentially in this rubric view I can look at each student they'll be shown on the left side of the screen in a tab and you'll recall that in the previous view the scorecard view the entire class was all on one page and you could scroll up and down so the sense I have on this is this allows you opportunities to go through each student one at a time which is probably the view I would use here so I would go through this student and I would click on again connecting each of these SLOs to an assignment that I've defined and then I would hit save and next it'll go to the next student do the same thing I think it's pretty useful it would just go through each student sequentially by the alphabet as opposed to looking at the entire class but it's it really is up to you again you'll see very similar setup here you just click on the performance here in terms of highest understanding to little to no understanding four to one you click on those it's very easy if a student wasn't there, didn't attend, or you cannot assess that student based on that particular SLO and the linked assignment, you could click on the NA. You can do your annotation as we talked about earlier. So type in your annotation here and then your name and hit save. And then it looks like, which is kind of nice, they're grayed out if there isn't an annotation. If there is an annotation, that's visible with the blue highlighting, and it will have the information here. Whoever is going to see this, in my case, they'll have all these like test notes on here. The one thing I can't seem to do on any of this is delete an annotation or a comment. So that's one thing that maybe I'm just not aware of how to do that, but... Um, it's maybe one thing to note there. Now this is an interesting feature in terms of student evidence and I know we've talked about like portfolios in the future is take a file and I'm not sure what files are available but I happen to have a screenshot of one of my final student projects. So what I could do is attach that file here and then I could write a comment and then hit upload and let's see what happens with that. the bottom of the screen it says student evidence uploaded successfully so presumably I will click on that again and sure enough it the file is here and this is just a screenshot of one of the um, projects that a student completed in this last class and I think there's a possibility then in the future if we wanted to we could upload papers or PDF or images in this area of student evidence and that would further track the progress that students have made and would give us a sense of what information was used to make that assessment. Again, I don't have a sense that that is happening now, but there are options here that you could use if you wanted to further track your student work. And maybe if you had particular students that you were tracking from one class into another, if there was a sequence or if you were in arts and humanities and students were doing some sort of portfolio, this would be another way to track that information as opposed to saving local files. If it's an in-person class, you may not have that sort of evidence, but for many of us doing online classes, it's pretty easy to take screenshots or print PDFs to our computer and then include those as part of the evidence if we so chose to do that for our outcomes and assessments. So I think that's everything I've discovered on this. Again, I'm finding eLumen really easy to work with as opposed to the templates we used in the past, which I think were much more intensive in terms of having to uh, work through all of this in more of a narrative format. So I hope that's helpful. And maybe as you continue to work through eLumen as well, we'll have uh, conversations about some of the, the features that we've discovered, and I think probably over time as an institution we'll continue to um, highlight and tweak some of the uh, technical interface aspects of eLumen as we work on assessments and other institutional efforts here at the college.